How's it going? It's been a while, and I wanted to post to post a video regarding a very specific kind of INTP and expressing the, uh, I guess, attributes that I have witnessed and experienced in myself. It is very experience-driven, um, but as the time has gone by, I'm just kind of learning more of the precise different types of like INTPs and then also um, the Enneagram. And I've come to find out that I am an INTP 5 wing 4 and the subset of INT or of of the 5 is the sexual 5, which is an interesting name. And so whenever you're trying to like share that with people, there's always kind of like a a little bit of a uh, wincing when uh, when they bring it up but um it answered a lot of questions that i was having a lot of struggles i was confront or facing and um i can see how it also created a lot of confusion um with people in the community when uh they're all questioning like if i'm an intp or whatever and all these different things and they assume that i've gotten from inf J, INFP, ISFP, I, I don't know, all sorts of different things. And so I, I um, wanted to share some of my experiences and tying them to the different types, um, the four, the wing four, the five, the sexual five, and, and then maybe some of the INTP um, parts as well. And just so, yeah, if anyone out there is either curious or is experiencing these things themselves and is trying to wrestle with the dichotomy in their own mind. Um, cause especially like it's, it's typical, um, or it's the archetype for like an INTP and especially in a five, uh, just to be excessively rigid or cold or, um, strong boundaries or all about facts and no emotion. And, uh, that's unfortunately a very limited view. And there are some that fit that scope very precisely. But um, the sexual five and with the with a strong wing four um, makes things very different. Um, and so even like some of the music that you guys might have witnessed on my channel comes from um, a lot of that. Uh, whereas there's we're exploring really dark emotion. We are trying to articulate it and express it, um, trying to find a way through it. Um, and then with like a four, you are trying to, you're trying to dive deep into the greatest uh, blackness of yourself um, and trying to wrestle with it and through it. And you can easily find yourself in a whirlpool of strange emotion, but then you're combating it with, with a five and all of the analytical side. And so it can be this great tension kind of back and forth between um, having a deep heart and emotion for things, but then also a, I don't care and very rigid and strong boundaries is like, even though, cause the three different fives, there's the castle five, which is, um, the uh, very strong boundaries, but also very isolated and hidden withdrawn and very much trying to reserve themselves. Um, and it is kind of a matter of control. Um, a different type than like the eight where they're trying to control their environment by dominating it. Um, a castle five is controlling by receding from it. And then you have a social five, which is very much focusing on trying to be in the know, like trying to go into other, other or go to a group of people who share deep knowledge about something. And then they're also ingesting a lot of knowledge. They're also very um, uh, like entrepreneurial. And then there's the sexual five. And what that is, is, um, they're, they're, they, have, they have deep connection desire between them and other people. They want deep intimacy. And um, there's also a continual drive to seek after the ideal mate. Um, that was something that was interesting I was finding. And um, each part I exhibit to some degree, but like the sexual five is the strongest one that I have. And then when you pair that with a four, it's like you you want to have an intimate, deep bond with somebody um, and sharing all of you. And and you even like put your worst first. I, I like to carry with my worst so that if they can handle that, then 
everything should be kind of uphill from there. But it's like, I deeply want to be valued for who I am because there's going to be times, seasons where I can't function very well. Um, and if I'm so, if I'm, if I'm admired for what I do, it's, it's, uh, um, very daunting because I can't always carry that output. Um, especially when I'm trying to fight the melancholy, but, um, yeah, so I was also noticing how it has created a lot of or what mean how what it, how, that correlation the combination between all those things what had sorry what had what made me very <laughs> predisposed to certain hurts and then not knowing how to navigate um, certain relationships both romantic or social when it starts to tap into these similar hurts um so this is kind of a ramble i'm kind of going all over the place um but hang in with me and hopefully um there's just things that connect and you can share your experiences as well but um i i lost a very intimate relationship with my brother and um so like the relationship's a little complicated. He's still around and there's, um, he's just not at a capacity to be able to be approached and have conversation. Um, and so having many, many years of brotherhood and watching him slip away, um, for several years, um, was a huge form of rejection, which is something I really, and really struggle with. And the relationship that we did have, it actually was really fun and really good. And um, as time went on, there was kind of like a lot of things were happening at once. A lot of social structures being lost between like church, um, friends, family, kind of lost them all at once in a season. And then also... uh, just ambitions in life, they all fell through. At least so it felt, and eventually kind of created this momentum of just constant sorrow and anger. Um, and if you, there's like the Effie explosion video that I have, some of you have seen, like that was kind of in the middle of all that. And so right now, I'm kind of on the other end, but still trying to navigate. Um, what happened and how it affected me and who I am that makes me sensitive to certain events of the past. Um, Like, I'm not terribly too sensitive to, like, trying something and it fails. You just try something else and it fails and you you try something else and it fails, but it's just you learn along the way. Um, But I am very sensitive to you had a deep connection in an intimate relationship and you lose that um, because that's one of the core drives, I guess, for the sexual five. And it doesn't have to be like an intimate partner. It's just someone that you so enjoy being with and you have um, a desire for just that intimacy one-on-one and you're hearing all of them and you're giving all of you. And, and there were a couple friends that I also had that and I lost all of them too. Um, and so, but it gets to a point where it's like, I can't even see the valuable, um, relationships I have now. Um, and then being afraid to get involved with, um, other relationships and uh, communities. Um, and so the re- yeah, so that's like just losing that relationship with my brother has caused a lot of, a lot of pain, um, and then losing those other relationships also caused a, a lot of pain. But it's just finding out why, where it's like you want to be deeply known, you want to be deeply understood, and that's something that the four is very um, driven by. And so I would be very adamant to try to help people feel understood and whatnot and and like wanting people to truly understand me, but not only that, but like find value and um, even romantic value 
And, but it's really difficult when it's like, I am in a constant spin of trying to seek out the ideal. And so, uh, I can find myself kind of getting trapped and the thing I'm looking for can't really happen. And the opportunities I have in the present aren't really obtainable. Um, and especially when trying to engage in any kind of relationships, it's like, it's either like these strong boundaries that you keep yourself from you and other people until there's this flip. And all of a sudden there's a huge, um, huge, uh, waterfall of, you just want to put all of you out there and you want them to see all of you and you want to embrace all of them and freaks them out and it doesn't help when you have abandonment issues and that's something I was finding myself struggling with uh, because of either my brother or other situations uh, relational situations where um, the faster I can get to commitment the faster I can feel confident in in something especially in a romantic relationship um but you end up jumping over all the hoops of how to develop a healthy relationship. Um, and it kind of, even with anybody, it doesn't even have to be romantic. It's just like you see somebody and you, you're driven so much to try to fill that void of intimacy and connection. Um, you give yourself out too much too fast or give too much of yourself too much too fast. You end up burning out um, and then you end up finding yourself in an awkward, fearful position, and you might back out. Whereas beforehand, while the desire was there, there were more strongholds in my life with like family or having an intimate connection like with my brother um, and having ambition and uh, clarity where I was kind of wanting to do and, and passions for what I was doing like with music and um, other things that I was pursuing. Um, it was easier to be able to slow into things, um, any kind of relationship. You begin to know them and um, asking those normal human questions. And But uh, later on, it's like it's really difficult to be able to um, slow in because you know the cost and you don't want to go through that again. And it's like a strange sense of courage that you have to develop in order to like know the potential hurt that's ahead of you and and do it the right way anyway. I'm still working through that, not sure um, how to go through all that, but um, I guess I do. It's just, it's hard to do it. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of stuff just kind of happened last several years and just seeing how it all kind of affected where I'm at and I'm still kind of in this weird slump where I can't quite regain myself um my mind is very important to me and it's it's the it's the core of everything that I do everything that I yeah that drives all my dreams and ambitions and whatnot and but if it's infiltrated by all of the um, stuff going on in there, then uh, it's kind of hard to recede in there to be creative. Um, and it's just kind of always sitting there like a leech kind of latched on to everything that you are. And, and then you start to identify yourself as all of these negative, terrible things. You're unlovable, unreachable. Um, you're just be broken beyond repair. You're broken beyond love. And it's just like all these other strong difficulties. But I mean, you still have to work through your hardship. You can't, you can't just expect a sympathy. And that's something I fell into a few years ago where I just gave up and I just wanted sympathy from people and any success that I would have, I wanted it to be because someone felt bad for me, not because I did 
a good job or worked hard at it or something because I just didn't want to do it anymore. I even did that like with a relationship. I, I led with wanting sympathy, not because, you know, here's who I am and I'm really excited to, you know, share this part of me to you and, um, and here's, you know, the confidence. <laughs> but it, instead of doing that, it was like wanting to share how much I'm just broken and pathetic and, and it just kind of, but it's a matter of control. I mean, everything was falling apart. So kind of realizing how much you desire control um, when everything is, well, when you're losing control. So it was a, it was a hard struggle trying to get through that. And I feel like there is a lot of breakthrough in that. Another thing I realized is that I had a, a high romanticism for my, my brother, which made the struggle and the healing process so much more difficult. And so like any romantic relationship, if something would end or even if I ended it, um, I would deeply desire him and wanting to reconnect and um, have that relationship with him. And I almost like I wouldn't even miss the person I was getting involved with. Um, it was more that I wanted him. And then I was even like trying to find him through them or trying to heal him through healing them or save them through saving some like, but finally there was a realization of just how much I romanticized just our relationship and him and need to put him in perspective, even if it's almost feels like it's a sense of letting go in a way that's really hard to do. So if you ever have loss and you find it uh, influencing you in a very impactful, negative way, that's something you might have to consider. But anyway, so that's just kind of a lot of different um, things I just kind of want to throw at you, you guys. And if any of you have wrestled through some of the similar stuff, and if you also are a similar five wing four INTP, um, hopefully that helps you feel a little more seen i get you and if anyone was just curious there's some information um i hope i covered it all right but uh, so hope you guys are doing all right um i'll kind of post here and there if something comes up um but uh i hope you have a great rest of your whatever you're doing your middle of the night end of the day middle of the morning and see you guys in another video <laughs> Or another life, you never know. And I'm getting a blink on my camera saying, you are about to run out of time. I'm recording in raw because YOLO, but I'm not even lighting anything properly. I'm just kind of doing whatever. <laughs> but hey, at least I have this nice microphone. <laughs> All right, see you guys later.